Hello. Thank you for joining Lakewood as we celebrate Memorial Day. I'm Chris Mikowski, president of Lakewood Cemetery, and it is my honor and privilege to serve as your Master of Ceremonies for this program. On behalf of Lakewood's Board of Trustees, our entire staff, crew, and I, it is with great pleasure that we present this ceremony to you. If you're joining us in this ceremony for the first time, we will do our very best to make this one of your more memorable Memorial Day experiences. And for those of you who have been here before, thank you very much for returning. We really appreciate your ongoing witness. Our Memorial Day ceremony has become a cherished tradition for so many in our community. Of course, this year it looks a little different. As we all learn to navigate the changing times during the coronavirus pandemic, it's very important we do our best to safely continue our traditions. We may not have all our traditional activities. However, we invite you to stroll Lakewood's grounds. Our buildings are closed a little longer, but our gates are still open, and our mausoleums will be open to those who need them over the Memorial Day weekend. And of course, we always encourage your participation through stories, comments, or photos on our social media. Before we begin our service, I want to let you know that this year marks the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. World War II lasted from 1939 to 1945. The United States entered the war on December 8, 1941, one day after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Franklin D. Roosevelt was president at the time. More than 16 million U.S. troops served in the war. 670,846 of them were wounded or killed. World War II proved to be the deadliest international conflict in history, taking the lives of 60 to 80 million people, including 6 million Jews who died at the hands of the Nazis during the Holocaust. Now is the time, as it was then, to come together, whether in person or online, to pray, to remember those we've lost, and have hope for a brighter, more peaceful future. As this is an important anniversary, we want to take a moment to reflect and honor those who serve in this war. Please take a few moments of silence. During the past 149 years, Lakewood Cemetery has grown to more than 250 acres and provided burial and cremation services to more than 200,000 families during their most difficult times, building relationships with these families that span generations. We believe that a cemetery is more than a graveyard. It's a chain by which families extend themselves. Death doesn't sever the links between generations. A cemetery is a community trust that bridges the past with the present. We preserve memories and serve as guardians of our community's heritage. As you walk these hallowed grounds amongst the final resting places of many people, you will come to understand that every grave, every marker bears a name. Every name represents a person who loved and was loved. The essence of a cemetery is best exemplified in the following verses whose author is unknown. This is a cemetery. Lives are commemorated, deaths are recorded, families are reunited, memories are made tangible, and love is undisguised. This is a cemetery. Communities accord respect. Families bestow reverence. Historians seek information and our heritage is thereby enriched. Testimonies of devotion, pride, and remembrance are carved in granite and cast in bronze to pay warm tribute to accomplishments and to the life, not the death, of a loved one. The cemetery is a homeland for memorials that are a sustaining source of comfort to the living. A cemetery is a history of people, 
a perpetual record of yesterday and a sanctuary of peace and quiet today. A cemetery exists because every life is worth loving and remembering always. Memorial Day, originally called Decoration Day, is a day of remembrance for those who have died in our nation's service. Today is the day we choose to pay tribute, honor, respect, and most of all, remember the men and women who gave their lives in service to our country, turning back those unfriendly foes, both at home and abroad, who would threaten our very existence and way of life. And as we speak, let us not forget the servicemen and women who are serving our country around the world. We recognize the contributions and sacrifices all veterans have made, both living and dead, to defend this great nation and thereby preserve the very freedoms we enjoy today. We ask at this time, wherever you are joining us from, that you take a moment to honor and reflect on those who are currently serving this country. To each and all of you and our veterans everywhere, we truly do owe a great debt of gratitude. Today, we also choose to celebrate and commemorate the lives of those who have touched us and whom we hold near and dear to our hearts, our own family members and friends who have died and live on in our memories. This, my friends, is why we celebrate today, to remember and never forget because as Thomas Campbell wrote in his poem entitled, Hallowed Ground, more than 200 years ago, to live in hearts we leave behind is not to die. Once again, thank you for being with us today, whether near or far, and we will now begin our 2020 Memorial Day program. Color Guard, please post the colors, and those at home can follow along with the Pledge of Allegiance to follow. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please welcome our guest, musician Robert Robinson, accompanied by Sam Reeves on the piano, as they lead us in the national anthem. Yeah. 
Thank you, Robert. Now, please join me in welcoming Pastor Kurt Calland of Mount Olivet Lutheran Church here in South Minneapolis. Pastor Calland will give the invocation for today's service. Let's pray. Oh Lord, our comfort and help in time of need, and Lord, we need you now. You have taught us that nothing can separate us from your love, that all souls are yours. We thank you this day, Lord, for the opportunity to gather, no matter where we are, to share this occasion, to remember. Help us always honor the memory of those brave men and women who sacrifice so that we may experience freedom. Strengthen and comfort, O oh Lord, all who mourn the loss of loved ones. Let us also be mindful of life, liberty, justice, and freedom, that we may ever be grateful to you for those who gave so much for our country. We ask your blessing upon this program. We thank you for the wonderful saints here at Lakewood that make this possible. And when we depart, Lord, please help us to remember your continued grace, mercy, and love, which makes abiding peace. We ask this in your name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Calland. As we reflect on the importance of Memorial Day, it's important to understand how this day began. On May 5th of 1868, just a few years after the end of the Civil War, Major General John A. Logan, United States Army, who served in the Houses of Congress and went on to serve as National Commander for the Grand Army of the Republic, issued a General Order No. 11. Isabella Makowski, a Hastings High School senior graduating this year, will read what are now famed as General Logan's Orders. On the 5th of May, 1868, as Commander-in-Chief of the Grand Army of the Republic, I issued to our comrades throughout the land the following order. Headquarters Grand Army of the Republic, Adjutant General's Office, Number 444, 14th Street, Washington, D.C., May 5th, 1868. General Orders Number 11. Number 1. The 30th day of May, 1868, is designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet churchyard in the land. In this observance, no form of ceremony is prescribed, but posts and comrades will in their own way arrange such fitting services and testimonials of respect as circumstances may permit. We are organized comrades, as our regulations tell us, for the purpose, among other things, of preserving and strengthening those kind and fraternal feelings which have bound together the soldiers, sailors, and Marines who united to suppress the late rebellion. What can aid more to assure this result than by cherishing tenderly the memory of our heroic dead, who made their hearts a barricade between our country and its foes? Their soldier lives were the reveille of freedom to a race in chains, and their deaths the tattoo of rebellious tyranny in arms. We should guard their graves with sacred vigilance, all that the consecrated wealth and toils of the nation can add to their adornment and security is but a fitting tribute to the memory of her slain defenders. Let no wanton foot tread rudely on such hallowed grounds. Let pleasant paths invite the coming and going of reverent visitors and fond mourners. Let no vandalism of avarice or neglect, no ravages of time testify to the present or to the coming generations that we have forgotten as a people the cost of a free and undivided republic. If other eyes grow dull and other hands slack and other hearts cold in the solemn trust, ours shall keep it well as long as the light and warmth of life remain to us. Let us then, at the time appointed, gather around their sacred remains and garland the passionless mounds above them with the choicest flowers of springtime. Let us raise above them the dear old flag they say from dishonor let us, in this solemn presence, renew our pledges to aid and assist those whom they have left among us. A sacred change upon the nation's gratitude, the soldiers and sailors, widow and orphan. 
Number two, it is the purpose of the Commander-in-Chief to inaugurate this observance with the hope that it will be kept up from year to year while a survivor of war remains to honor the memory of his departed comrades. He earnestly desires the public press to call attention to this order and lend its friendly aid in bringing it to the notice of comrades in all parts of the country in time for simultaneous compliance therewith. Number three. Department commanders will use every effort to make this order effective. By order of John A. Logan, Commander-in-Chief. Thank you, Isabella. Robert Robinson will perform God Bless America. Robert, for blessing us with your amazing voice and talent this Memorial Day. 
Today's address is given by artist Javier Tavera. Mr. Tavera is an artist based out of the Twin Cities who focuses on telling the stories of underrepresented communities through his art. Recently, he did a series of photographs featuring veterans, going back as far as the veterans of World War II. Alongside these photographs, he learned their stories and experiences, capturing a unique and fascinating perspective on how we can use art to memorialize and honor, not only for all who view it, but for the families of these veterans to treasure. As we reflect on the meaning of Memorial Day and how we can all honor and share stories of our veterans, please welcome Javier Tavera. Uh, thank you very much for having me today here. Uh, thank you for the Lakewood Cemetery for allowing me to speak about uh, the histories uh, that I have recapped from uh, the veterans. My name is Javier Tavera, and I am a photographer. Allow me to be transparent from the beginning. I myself have never served in the armed forces, but through my documentary work, I have the great pleasure of meeting and listening to the stories of many of these brave men and women. Photography's main concern is time and memory. A couple hundred years of photography had helped us memorialize people and historical moments compressed into fractions of a second to create a memory. As a documentary photographer, I began to seek out veterans about seven years ago because I have an interest in gaining a better understanding of their lives and their experiences. A journalist friend of mine mentioned Escuadron 201, a group of veterans in Mexico who lacked recognition for their military service. The Mexican 201 Fighter Squadron assisted in the Allied Forces effort during World War II. The squadron was known by the nickname Aguilas Aztecas, or Aztec Eagles. Although we're there deemed successful, they are barely mentioned in a couple paragraphs of the Mexican history. Also, the monuments dedicated to them are few and scattered throughout Mexico. I approached this photographic project with extraordinary caution, as I knew little about the military. My first face-to-face -face encounter was with Capitan Manuel Cervantes Ramos, a Mexican World War II veteran that received me at his home in Mexico City. When we met, he was dressed in full military regalia with what I imagined what were scrutinizing eyes. Although I didn't know what to expect, I learned through his stories about his experience in the military from Mexico to intense training in the US to the Pacific Theater. Without knowing, she, he showed me all the humanity that lies silently beneath the armed forces. From that encounter, he provided contact information so I was able to secure over, over 10 interviews with Mexican World War II veterans. Each one of those encounters taught me something from resilience and courage to the unbearable fear of being forgotten. Most of those soldiers have now passed away. Sometimes afterward, I began another photographic project with veterans, this one here in Minnesota. With the help of post number five in the west side of St. Paul, I photographed and interviewed 34 Mexican, Chicano, Latino veterans. The veterans served in the United States of America military in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. One by one, these veterans received me in their homes share their stories and vulnerabilities, laughs and tears, recounts of good times and bad. And most important, a brief but meaningful time for a portrait. I gained a lot of respect for this service and it was important for me to document their contributions to the United States. When I was about to conclude the Minnesota Veterans Project, I received an email from Alicia Visker. 
she introduced herself as the granddaughter of Mr. Al Capiz, one of the veterans that I had the good fortune to photograph and interview. She told me that her grandfather has passed away recently, and while cleaning his state, she find my business card among his belongings. She wanted to know if I will share the portraits of him with her family. I immediately agreed. I sent her some images and a copy of my unedited recorded interview of him, with him. A couple of weeks later, she called, tell me that she shared the interview with Mr. Capiz with her mom. The two of them sat together to listen to the nearly one hour long interview of Mr. Capiz's voice narrating his story. They listened attentively because it was the first time they heard him talk about when he was in the service. Often, veterans do not share their stories with family members and are kept silent to shelter loved ones from this distress. Hearing his proud voice telling stories of being in the military as a Mexican-American brought tears to their eyes. My new documentary project is about American deported veterans. These veterans who are foreign born and United States and serving the United States military with aspirations to become a citizen. To this day, hundreds of veterans have been deported because struggles often related of or repercussions of serving in the U.S. wars. Each year, a few steps from U.S. soil in the border cities of Tijuana and Juarez, veterans celebrate Memorial Day abroad. A few weeks ago, I asked U.S. Army deported veteran Hector Barajas Varela advice on how to write a brief speech for this day. Mr. Barajas, who has been awarded U.S. citizenship, lives now in Tijuana, and he's dedicated to providing support for deported veterans. He stated that on Memorial Day, many veterans gather at the deported veterans' sport house. They travel to the nearby border crossing carrying banners and American flags, where they voice out loud the names of soldiers that have perished in exile. This year's celebration might be canceled due to COVID-19. Mr. Barajas Varela helps to assure the Puerto veterans that are not abandoned or forgotten. In all my projects and research about veterans, I discovered the majority of men and women who serve this country want to be acknowledged and remembered. Each interview and encounter with veterans reaffirms that all the fights experienced by the veterans, the most fierce, has been the fight against oblivion. Perhaps with a small gesture of a photograph, I can contribute to help us remember and prevent us from forgetting. Stories show us that we have in common with others, that they help us understand the world around us in our, and our place in history. I will encourage veterans to share their stories. The stories have an important place in history, a story narrated by you that should be remembered. Thank you. Thank you, Javier, for sharing that amazing story with us on this perfect day for remembrance. The next and final sequence of today's program will happen without interruption. Robert Robinson will sing his final song for today, Bring Him Home, followed by a benediction, taps will play, and finally, we will retire the colors.
son I might have known If God had granted me a son The summers die one by one How soon they fly on and on And I am old and will be gone May the strength of God sustain us. May the power of God preserve us. May the hands of God protect us. May the way of God direct us, and may the love of God go with us this day and forevermore. So remember this day and every day that the Lord blesses you and keeps you. The Lord's face shines on you, and it's gracious unto you. The Lord looks upon you with favor and grants you peace. God bless you. Amen. Once again, many thanks to our program participants and to those of you at home watching this program. We thank you for joining Lakewood as we continue our traditional Memorial Day ceremony and we look forward to seeing you next year. This concludes our program.